All right, so let's start with the big story that we are tracking on Vyond at this hour. The counting of votes is underway in the African nation of Uganda as the country has been put under a complete internet blackout. The five hours after counting, the electoral body anticipates preliminary results from about 330 polling stations and has given the incumbent president, Yuweri Kaguta Muzweni, an early lead. The long-time president is in a face-off against a man who is said to be half his age, pop star turned politician Bobby Wine. Meanwhile, the president has also come out and said that he will accept the results so long as they are fair. Now, the results are expected on Saturday. I congratulate all those who have voted. Let the counting be peaceful. Nobody should try to bring violence. Of, of course, if the results are, 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 are fair, why would they not accept it? Uh -huh. Why? Yes. If, if there were no mistakes made. So after a bitter campaign season that was marred by deadly violence, bloodshed and harassment of the opposition and other journalists, security has now been beefed up as counting began in many districts. Lorries carrying soldiers drove through the city and the police and local defence units also patrolled throughout. Experts believe that the scare of electoral fraud and rigging looms large due to internet shutdown. This is many people who have been arrested for allegedly manning an illegal vote tallying centre at a hotel in the capital city. Another hindrance to free and fair elections took place in six districts as reports indicated that voting was delayed Polls were due to open at 4 a.m. GMT, but voting began almost about 90 minutes later. Subsequently, the lines of voters also grew outside the polling stations. The more than 18 million voters have registered for the election. The voters cast their ballots for the presidential, parliamentary and for electing their local representatives as well. So there are 11 presidential candidates who are vying for the leadership of Uganda for the next five years. And a candidate must win more than 50% of the vote to avoid a runoff. So let's take a look as to who are contesting in these very contentious and much debated elections. Now the most prominent ones include the incumbent president, Mr. Mosweni, a former rebel who came to power in January 1986 and has ruled the country with an iron grip since then. Mosweni is now 76 years old and is one of Africa's longest serving leaders. His main rival is Mr. Wine, a 38 year old musician who was elected to parliament in 2017. The 38 year old Bobby Wine is channeling the anger of many young Ugandans who say that the former guerrilla leader Mosweni is out of touch. And he's also accused the incumbent president of being a dictator who's failed to tackle issues of unemployment and the surging public debt. All right, now to get us more updates in terms of what's actually playing out in Uganda at this point of time, we're joined in by our correspondent Chris Ochamringa, who's joining us live from Kinshasa. Chris, thank you very much indeed for joining us in this broadcast on Vion. So what's happening at this point of time? How is the counting of votes going on? Well, the Uganda's uh, chairman, the chairman of Uganda's Electoral Commission has just released, uh, announced the, the third batch of uh, results got from 10,000 polling stations across the country and uh, which indicate that uh, president the incumbent leader Ugandan leader president Yoweri Museveni is in the lead with 1 million 800,000 votes and his closest challenger Robert Chagulanyi who's better known as Bobby Wine came second with about more than 800,000 votes the other uh, opposition leaders were trailing behind these two main candidates now people from uh, Bobby Wine's camp have already dismissed these results. They are saying the election is being stolen by President Museveni's government and his handlers, and they they are saying that they have established a tallying centre in the in the Netherlands, in Amsterdam, where they have collected results from each polling station, which shows. 
totally different results. There's also another opposition leader known as Mogesha Muntu who issued a statement saying that he's in a state of deep grief because of the outcome of the results that have been released so far. Now, these are just preliminary results. The Electoral Commission made it very clear that there are more than 34,000 polling stations in the country. They have only counted uh, uh, the results from 10,000 polling stations, and they expect to announce the final results tomorrow at around 15 GMT, but, and they're urging people to remain calm. Absolutely. President Museveni and his government have said that they are ready to quell any protests by people. There's a very heavy security presence around Kampala, the capital Kampala, and other parts of, the, of, of Uganda. Absolutely, indeed. Now, Chris, uh, you know, for people who are looking at this election from the outside, something that strikes is that the entire elect electoral process is t taking place at a time when there is a complete internet blackout in Uganda. What is the premise for this? Why? Is there an internet blackout at the time when vote counting is taking place? Well, just a few days before the elections on Thursday, uh, Facebook uh, shut down uh, a number of accounts of people who were uh, in the, uh, the campaign uh, managers of uh, the incumbent leader, President Yoweri Museveni. And President Museveni and his party was very disappointed by that action. And they said they're going to retaliate by shutting down the Internet uh, to show Facebook and other, you know, uh, foreign tech giants that this is a, a sovereign country and they'll not allow them to come and try and influence the election. And that is why they ordered all the service providers in Uganda to shut down the Internet. So people haven't been able to communicate. They're relying on uh, the, the results from the Electoral Commission. Right. Interesting. And also what is interesting is that the incumbent president, Museveni, has said that he will accept the results of this election so long as the results are fair. And from the preliminary leads that you're pointing out, it does appear that Museveni is quite clearly in the lead with almost about a million votes. You know, the question that I want to ask you is, um, you know, will there be any kind of protest that the opposition may put up after the results are announced? Well, well, members of uh, Bobby Wine's team are very disappointed. They're saying this election has been rigged, and some of them are radical people. Uh, the security officers in Uganda said they got inf intelligence information that some of them are planning to carry out widespread protests around the country, and that's why they have deployed uh, military officers. They are armored personnel carriers, the kind that you see in war zones in ca the capital Kampala and other parts of, 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 of Uganda to try and break up these protests. President Museveni gave a very stern warning saying that they will not entertain any protests by people. They have to respect the outcome of this election and they will not, uh, they do not want to see what happened in, you know, the U.S., the Washington, D.C. protests by uh, supporters of pe President Trump happening in Uganda. And so people are just waiting for the final outcome of these elections that are expected on Saturday, and then we will know what will really happen. Absolutely, indeed. And it's, it's a very interesting situation there in Uganda. The question that I want to ask you is, just before we let you go, President Museveni has been in power since 1986. He's now 76 years old. How long? Does he intend to stay on as the president of Uganda? Well, the president has been very cagey about that. Every time journalists asked him, ask him about, you know, having overstayed in power, he says, look, this is a democracy. The people are continuing to vote me because I'm still strong. He has been repeatedly trying to show Ugandan people that he is still very uh, mentally sound and, and, and physically fit to lead the country. He keeps doing uh, push-ups, showing people videos of him doing push-ups and other physical drills to show them that he's capable of continuing to lead this country for many more years to come. Many people, the young people especially in Uganda, are sick and tired of you know, the, the long rule of President Museveni. They want to see a new leader who is in, in touch with the realities of the day. But the president says, look, we are here as long as democracy is going to you know, allow us to continue leading the country. And so it's a very complicated situation because the president's power, the NRM, uh, has the majority in parliament, and they are the ones who push through whatever the president uh, wants to happen in the country. And so uh, we, we don't have uh, 
uh, uh, uh, the separation of powers right. as is supposed to be according to the Constitution. The Parliament, the Executive and the Judiciary are fused in Uganda. Absolutely indeed. Thank you very much indeed, Chris O'Chamring. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.